Trump is dead. I don't know about all of y'all, but uh, one of my biggest con- uh, points of contention when it comes to the pandemic era was <clears throat> it was remarkable to me how many people on the left, the far left, like I'm talking like even like socialists, communists, anarchists, mm-hmm. <clears throat> how many people completely betrayed the working class, completely Whoa. betrayed them in like. I mean, shit, I don't know about you, but I saw a ton of this rhetoric when people were talking about, I mean, shit, my wife lost her job, but a ton of people who were giving valid grievances that they're concerned about is in like, you know, these lockdowns. Well, I lost my job. How many like people on the left were like, well, just get another job. And it's like, yeah, just go get one. eh? just go like, just go like, like redo your entire fucking career. Just yeah, like, pull, like figure out a new path in life because of these policies. Does that yeah, make sense to you? 20 years into their careers that they lost. It's completely unacceptable that there's no recourse for those people. Yeah. And like, yeah, sure. The government up here in Canada did, did CRB, but a, that obviously wasn't enough. And it was no recompense for people losing their whole fucking careers, having to like pick a different field to go in. And secondly, that they, they mentioned later, like, Oh, by the way, you owe us that back. So that was yeah, a little was shitty absurd. too. Well, but and like, even like for some people that actually needed it, like for me during the pandemic, because of my heart transplant, I couldn't work. I stayed hidden. Basically they like about a year and a half into it. It was like completely cut off any, money whatsoever and i was just like all right i guess i'm screwed uh yeah and here's the thing like if you're a government and you you like you're basically denying people the ability to make a living you have to make up for that you can't just be like well sorry because of these policies you're kind of fucked and in the states it was even worse because yeah. like in the in the states they didn't even have CERB. It was just like, yeah, well, I don't know, figure it out. Sorry, sweaty. And a lot of people lost their jobs. And you saw a lot of people on the left who were like, well, you can just get another job or small businesses that are like, my small business is gonna go under. Like, what the fuck do I do? I'm not allowed to do business. And they're like, Yeah, well, maybe go find a job. Um shit, my favorite fish and chip place in uh in Etobicoke in uh Toronto. It's called Viking Fish and Chips. And um, they went under after the pandemic and they just never came back ever. Like th- that business is just gone forever. And I know a lot of small businesses that are in the same boat where they just, they're never coming back. That business is just gone. They couldn't recover. And of course they can't recover because the government basically said like, okay, so for months and months and months, like you just can't bring in any revenue because you can't have any customers in, you can't have any business. And we're not going to do anything for you. We're not going to do anything. And for restaurants, especially smaller (coughs) restaurants, their money is made in the liquor they sell when you come in to eat and stuff like that too, right? Like that's where the markup is. The markup on food isn't that great. So suddenly having to convert to like takeout, like you said, destroyed them. It just decimated them. Yep. Yeah, because the restaurant, like going to a restaurant, that's an experience, right? It's not just like food, because if you just wanted to eat food, you could go to the grocery store and make some stuff, or you can just like, yeah, like there's already takeout establishments available. People want to go to a restaurant, it's because they probably are celebrating something, or they want to have a good time, or they want to like, you know, maybe they're meeting up with like a friend, or they got a birthday, like it's a whole experience. And small businesses, whole livelihoods depend on that and that was just like completely wiped off and the thing that bothers me the fucking most thing that bothers me the absolute most is that during this whole lockdown thing who's allowed to stay open walmart big box stores any large corporation was just immune from these policies yep you could go in Walmart just fine. You couldn't go to your local Ma and Pa restaurant mm-hmm. to get a to get a meal. Yeah, but you go to Walmart with with a thousand people in the building. Yeah, with like a thousand people in the fucking building. Minimal protections. Nobody's really doing anything. Nobody cares. You just nope. go to Walmart, get COVID, 
bring it home or go to Walmart with COVID, give it to other people. Like it, like none of this made any fucking sense. No. And I was okay with the two weeks. I actually was like, I'm like, all right, well, give them the two weeks. That's fine. Yeah. But it was like, I was like, caveat two weeks. Cause then it gives us some time to just kind of like look around, see what's happening, figure it out. And then we can kind of go on from there. But it was like, immediately it said two weeks. You had some people like, no, nothing. And then other people were like, just stay home. Don't move. It's like, there's yeah. got to be some like continuity, but also you have to find a balance between people's different opinions. You can't just go out and be like, oh, they're Nazis. Oh, they're communists. It's like, oh, now we're just name calling. Great. Yeah, that was the thing, too, because they were calling. I remember it. All the conservatives. And I hate this, but, you know, COVID was the one era where I agreed with conservatives on more things than I could agree with. But, of course, that that's that's that tracks because they're always going to be the controlled opposition for anything the other side does. And you guys got to realize this if you don't buy now. Um you know, you have you have the establishment and then you have the counter establishment in this like political system. Mm. And th- the ones criticizing the ones in power are are always going to do that exact same shit when they're in power. The only issue is that they're not in power, so it's bad. And you'll yeah. you'll see this perfect example. All of the Republicans and conservatives that are that were super critical of the Biden administration, all that for the Ukraine shit, the war in Ukraine, like stop funding them. Why are you sending our taxpayer dollars to Nazis? All that, all that. Okay. They claim to be anti-war. What are they supporting now? They're supporting a genocide in the middle East. Full throated, full throat support for genocide in the middle East. Oh yeah. They're just causing everything they can behind that too. And it's just like, yeah. What happened to not murdering people? Like, what happened to your what happened that was to your, kinda like the standard left ideology was like we should probably not kill people with bombs. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That was like the starting point. And then I'm like, okay, what happened to the whole like we shouldn't be sending our taxpayer dollars to funding conflicts abroad? Did you guys all forget about that? Did it only apply when it when it was like the Biden government? And now that it's like your side or whatever, it doesn't apply. Yeah. Do you guys well, not actually, have any principles? I've got a fantastic example, actually. So when Trump was president, they were doing Operation Warp Speed. Biden, yep. Kamala Harris, yes. all these liberals came out like, oh, I'm not going to trust a vaccine from Trump. Like, Trump was in the laboratory, just out of my way. The big hands, orange, just mixing <laughs> stuff. Like, yeah, we're making vaccines. <laughs> it's like, regardless of who was in charge, the scientists were still responsible. I mean, whether they were doing what was correct, well, that's another topic. But it wasn't Trump in the laboratory just mixing chemicals up. <laughs> like it didn't, when Biden suddenly became president, it didn't suddenly just change everything that had happened before. Like, and Kamala is like, came out, outright and was like, I will not take a vaccine by Trump. Like, the- yeah, the no funny is a vaccine by Trump. He's not making it, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's not like, oh, we're gonna make the best vaccine. I'm putting, oh, I'm putting some McDonald's in here and some some well done steak with some ketchup. Like that's all what's huge, happening. Huge, huge vaccine. Huge vaccine. Bigly biggest vaccine ever with his who farted face. But like that's not that's not what and the funniest part too is like it wasn't even a different vaccine. He did Operation yeah. Warp Speed, Biden took over, Operation Warp Speed was still going on, the whole yeah. thing nothing, nothing changed. changed. And then everybody's like, Oh, you gotta take the vaccine, and it's like, what the fuck happened to you guys? Like, you literally were just- a week ago you were saying not to take it. Yeah. <laughs> And they were giving like the same criticisms that people who were hesitant were giving, where it's like, uh, I don't know, like 
Because they were on the news saying, like, well, it hasn't been in development too long. Uh, usually vaccines take, like, years and years. Um, yeah. da, da, da. And it's like, well, like, oh, long-term yeah. studies take long-term. <laughs> yeah, they take, like, an actual long-term. They don't take, it like, months. Name. <laughs> it, they don't take months, and then it's just like, trust me, bro. And it's like, yeah. they don't understand that it's like, first off, um... I have no reason to trust Pfizer ever. Go to their Wikipedia page and you don't have a reason to trust them either. They have a I very long plus reasons, actually. Yeah. They have a very long history of deceiving the public and doing all kinds of fuckery. So that that's not enough. But to be like, trust this company that has a history of doing this and trust them with a timeline of like months is I'm sorry, like it's 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 no shit. But all these people were giving those takes when Trump was in office, and the second Biden gets in office, they forgot about all that, and they're just like, "Yeah, no, you know what? Like, we we got to take this because it's like <laughs> it's super safe. It's so it just if you so don't take it. Dope. It's because you hate humanity. If you don't take a bit, it, a bit aggressive, guys. Hey. If you don't take it, it's because you're a Trump. <laughs> yeah, you like and before. Trump. It's like. Before it's like if you do take it, it's because you're a trumper. It's just there's no there's no fucking consistency at all. Yeah. But and again, like, for the- it was Trump against Hillary, I was like 100 percent Trump over Hillary, because she's a warmongering murderer. I was like, I'll at least give Trump the benefit that he turned around and just did the same shit. Anyways, but like I didn't support him, but I was like, over Hillary, yes. <laughs> uh I mean that's the thing that a lot of people need to realize. Like a lot of people just voted for Trump because it was like a protest vote, right? It was like, okay, well, we're, we're frustrated with Obama. We're frustrated with the wars. Uh, our, our material conditions are dog shit. So yeah, we'll take a chance on a fucking billionaire game show host who bankrupted a casino. Cause you know what? And this is the point I made back when he did get in. I'm like, maybe he will fuck up so bad that it'll destroy the system. I don't know. Let's. Well, that was kind of the thing. I was like, you know what? Maybe he will do something enough to get some like idiots. But I was like, uh, that went away pretty quick. Yeah, it became pretty apparent pretty early on that it's like, okay, no, this guy's just like, he's just gonna, he's just gonna, he's working with the deep state. Like, yeah, it's like he's he, absolutely no different. Uh uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, my uh my point is that like my biggest one of the one of the biggest disappointments I had during the COVID era was how the left um how the left treated these people not just with lockdowns, not just with like uh the mandates for one when mm-hmm. you know you had so so called like comrades that were out here like like shilling hard for for like mandates and to the point where they were literally saying like oh my god we need to anyone who doesn't get vaccinated let's round them up in camps and all this all this other shit can i give a little bit of historical um perspective as well on this for sure yeah for sure um during the like 20s to 30s in nazi germany one of the things they did to dehumanize other people was specifically what liberals were doing. They were calling them the most vile insults. In Nazi Germany, you were called Jews, communists, socialists, Romney, mm-hmm. Slavic. Um, it was the same basic principles they were using. They degrade that person so that people will idly see by, and like you kind of just said, where it's like, oh, don't let him go to the hospital, let him die, all that stuff. You start seeing that stuff, and even we start seeing assisted suicide, pretty sure you're going to start ta- seeing the news, talk about useless eaters, the mentally ill, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and we already have the assisted suicide. So they've already set up the mechanism that they're going to try and put people through. Like you can kind yep. of start to see it coming along. And it's like, you have to have a very kind of like long-term outlook to really start to see it. 
But it's like once you see it, it starts all kind of coming together. Yep. No, one hundred percent. It's very much exactly the same principles they used, which is what's scary. And especially as a guy with a heart transplant, I'm one of those useless eaters, and I don't plan on going down easy. So, <laughs> yeah, but will will you eat the bugs, Yeti? That's a big question. Oh no, I've got a huge hydroponic <laughs> garden next to me. I'd show you, but my curtains are up. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That's the that was. That's the scariest part of um I'm pretty sure the useless eaters quote is from Klaus Schwab's book. But he literally refers to like just the whole population is like useless eaters and you're like, oh yeah. shit. well it's originally a Joseph oh, Goebbels no. thing. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, and even um so there's um what's his name? I forget the name. The guy in the States, I'll have to look up his name after who coined the term public relations for um, like for a media spokesperson for new, for politicians literally stated, he's just renaming a propagandist. Like he, that is the exact reason they came up with the new name. So anytime you hear about public relations, they're propagandists. That is yeah. what they are. Right. So, I mean, it, you can, you can kind of figure it out in the name though. Right. Um, like, Mm-hmm. Like public relations. Well, what does that mean? It means you're interfacing with the public. Well, what does that mean? Why would you be interfacing with the public? Well, you'd be interfacing with the public if you're trying to get them on board. Uh, you, you're you're trying to influence them. You're trying to change their mind mm-hmm. about something. Yeah, you're trying to put a positive spin. And it's not like any government's not going to do that, or anybody trying to sell something. We're going to try and put a positive spin on it. But it's like you get to the outside of reality where it's like you're not even remotely trying to put a pause, like be anywhere as realistic. You're just trying to say fluff so that people sound like they have happy. Yep. And I mean, <clears throat> at the end of the day, like it, it's pretty easy to tell when I'll say this forever the biggest piece of advice I can give you guys. Okay. Um, if someone's talking to you and it feels like a sales pitch, if someone on social media that you don't know is trying to talk to you and it feels like a sales pitch, it's cause it's a fucking sales pitch. That's it. Done. Like it's the easy. If you feel like someone's selling you some shit, it's probably cause they're selling you some shit. 